Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Hanging with the Coach. This is Coach B. I know it's been a long time since I put out a Hanging with the Coach video. Hope all you guys are doing well. Haven't seen you or spoken to you in a while. Today, we can actually call this video uh, Cognac with the Coach because this is going to be a video where I basically test out several different cognacs to see which is going to be my favorite. Um, let's talk about how we got here for a minute. Uh, earlier this year, actually not too long ago, I was talking with a couple of buddies who are also cognac connoisseurs, uh, my main man Lou Howard and my other main man Freddie Jordan. Uh, both these guys I consider, you know, true cognac guys. And we kind of reached a point where we're, we're thinking that uh, we, we deserve good cognac, right? There's no excuse for us to drink subpar cognac anymore. We should try the best of the best, see what we like, and if need be, pay for the best. So subsequently, I was having a conversation with my daughter, Missy, uh, who, by the way, is now a state certified bartender. Congratulations, Missy. Um, and I was telling her about this revelation that me and Lou and Freddie had. And she said, well, you should you know, document it on your, on your video channel. And I was like, you know what? I sure should. So that's how we got here today. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what I hope to accomplish, right? So what am I actually testing out? I'm going to be testing out Hennessy VSOP Privilege, uh, Hennessy White, a non-Hennessy brand called Martel uh, Cordon Bleu, uh, James Hennessy, which I'm told is really, really good, and this was really tough to get. It took some doing for me to get that one, and Hennessy XO. What I'm not going to be testing is the Hennessy Master Blenders uh, number two. I didn't really like this, and I can hear what you're saying. Well, Coach, you didn't really like it. Just like a half a bottle gone. Yes, that, that's true. Um, but I've had this for a few years. So Hennessy was doing this series where they would have their blenders mix up their own uh, version of cognac. And I got the number two. I thought it was a little too sweet. Didn't finish it. Uh, but I'm told that number three is the one to get. Um, before we get into how I'm going to test these, let me talk about two cognacs uh, that you don't see here because I've already, I've already crushed them. But I will tell you what I thought of them. So the first one was about a year ago and it was called Frappin. And I was intrigued by Frappin because it was called Frappin Cigar Blend. And I like to have my cognac with, with a cigar. I, I like to pair it with a cigar. So I did try the Frappin. Um, and just so you know, my grading scale is going to be 1 to 10. 10 is top, 1 is obviously the bottom. I would put the Frappin at a 7. Would I buy it again? Yes, under, under certain circumstances. Um, what you don't see here is the regular Hennessy, just the straight Hennessy. I would put that at a 7.5 to give you an idea of where I think Frappin rates. And then, a couple years ago, I actually retired from coaching and I got a really nice gift from LB and Vern, and it was Tesseron XO Traditional. Um, you see the picture here that I put, put on the screen. Uh, looked very nice, I love the shape of the bottle. Uh, tried it out, finished it, and at the end of the day, I give it a 6.5. Uh, would I buy it again? No. I thought it was light in color and texture, and just a slight bite back at the end, which had kind of a lemon thing going on. But if you were to put an XO on, on, on a cognac, it needs to be XO like. I was talking to Freddie about it and he said basically you have to be careful because some people think they can just throw XO on anything, but if you're used to cognac and you have a certain palate for it, I, I don't know, you might find it uh, a, a little lacking. I would have never called it an XO. I don't think I would have called it a VSOP to be honest with you. So those were the two that I've already tried that aren't here. The other thing I want to talk about is I've seen some folks on YouTube who have, you know, uh, tested out cognacs and given their opinion. I'm not doing it the way that I've seen on YouTube. Everything that I've seen shows some people, they sit around and for everyone they're tasting, they hit it, hit the next one, hit the next one, hit the next one. I'm not drinking all these back to back to back. I don't think that makes any sense. The way I'm testing it is I am going to pour a small shot into a particular glass. I'm going to let it sit for 15 minutes, then I'm going to test it out. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to then take that same cognac of the day and put it in a tumbler. So the way I normally drink my cognac is in a larger glass with lots of ice, but I'm going to test it straight up 
And then if it passes that test, it will go into the tumbler to be paired with a cigar for the evening. And then I'm gonna come back day after day after day after day after day until I've gotten all those and I'll give you my results at the end. So from a baseline perspective and what we're gonna start with today is this Hennessy VSOP Privilege. This is my go-to. I always have some of this in the house. It's my regular, it, it's, it's really good by itself. I don't mix it with anything. I pair it with a cigar all the time and I'm very comfortable with it. Everything else that I test over the course of the week is gonna be measured against this. How are we gonna test it? Obviously, we're gonna pour it in a glass. What type of glass? Um, you may notice, you know, regular glasses like this one, and this, by the way, is my regular Hennessy tumbler. This is what I normally drink at night when I have a lot of ice in it and, and the privilege. But re really, we should be doing our test in what's called a tulip glass. So you may say, I mean, I got other Hennessy glasses, very nice, you know, and it's good, but a tulip glass has a particular bulbous shape on the bottom, similar to a brandy sniffer like this one right here, which isn't bad, but we're not gonna use that for this test. We're gonna use the Glen Karen tulip glass. This is a thing of beauty. Um, if, if you look, it's actually taller and it comes to a narrow neck, which is what you want if you want to really experience uh, all of the cognac. This Glen Karen glass is technically a whiskey glass and shout out to my friend and neighbor Steve uh, who turned me and Lou on to these some years ago he is a big time single malt guy having said that I don't mind a good single malt like Glen Fittich 12 year the McAllen 12 haven't opened this one yet or this Glen Morangi extremely rare 18 year single malt scotch uh, I really look forward to to doing a comparison test with all three of those but today it's about cognac, not about single malt. But I mentioned single malt because again, the shape of this particular tulip glass and the weight of it. This glass, although bigger, is lighter than the traditional short type of cognac sniffer that you're probably used to seeing. It's got a very narrow neck, so we're gonna pour a shot in here. We're gonna let it sit for 15 minutes and then I'll come back and, and test it. One cool thing about these, if you ever decide to get them, and I'll put a link in the description, is that when you get this glass, you should also get, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but we'll try, this lid, glass lid made for this. So after we do the initial sample, I'm gonna put this on it for a few minutes, keeps those, those uh, flavors and aroma inside, and then I'm gonna take it off and finish it off. All scores will come at the end of the video, when I have the bigger drink in the tumbler, which is probably the equivalent of, say, two and a half, maybe three shots with a lot of ice, I'm typically watching a movie outside on the deck late at night. I always pair that with a cigar. It's going to be one of these three. This Nub Habano, which is a 4x66, the Oliva Milanio Series V Double Toro, the Oliva Series V Double Toro. This is a good two-hour smoke. Uh, this is the strongest of the three, so when paired with a cognac, I get a really nice balance. So let's begin with the Hennessy VSOP Privilege. We're going to let this sit and breathe for 15 minutes, then we'll come back for the taste test. And we are back. It's actually been about 17 minutes. So let's check it out. Beautiful color, consistent all the way around. Pleasant aroma. Very smooth. This definitely passes the test, as I indicated. I mean, it's my go-to. Um, I could have it like this, uh, or I could have it like I'm going to in the tumbler with the ice. I'm gonna load that up and get that ready, uh, and then decide which cigar we're gonna pair it with. Tumbler with some ice. There's a slight fog on the inside now where the lid has actually captured the, the uh, 
the essence of that VSOP privilege. Mm. Excellent. Let's load up the tumbler. No shot glasses, it's just the old eye test. What can I tell you? I don't know how much is in there. That's a good tumbler, got a little ice working. Now you can actually see the word Hennessy at the bottom because you got the contrast of this beautiful brown color for the cognac. So I can tell you with this one today, I am going to pair it with an Oliva Series V Double Toro uh, while I go outside and watch a movie. I think today it's um, the very first Transformers from 2007. So that's it for now. I'll be back tomorrow where we'll look at the next one, which is the Hennessy White. All right, see ya. Okay, here we go. Night number two. And today it is the Hennessy Pure White. Um, I'm gonna open this up. I gotta say I'm a little concerned. <laughs> about a, <laughs> I'm a little concerned about a cognac it doesn't have a cork in it. Just looks like a like a top. So we got a fresh glass. Uh, let's give it a shot. Very light in color, as you can see. Uh, almost looks scotch-like. But we're gonna let that sit for 15 minutes. We'll come back and uh, we'll give it the old taste test. It just looks clear. Interesting. No real aromas popping out. A little something there at the end. It's not bad. Um, is it good enough to go with a two, two and a half hour movie in a stogie though? I'm not sure. This, this might be like... Um, sidecar material or something that you would mix it with but the way that I like to drink cognac this um, it's 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 smooth going down I feel it um, but I think what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna cleanse the palate move on to the next one and maybe come back to this at the end depending upon how I do but it's interesting not bad, but just, just different. So what are we going to do now? Uh, I got to cleanse the palate. And we're going to go with the one that's on deck. Fair enough. Which means I'm going to need a new glass. Be right back. Okay, so we're back on night two, which should have been night three if the white would have passed the test. Again, it didn't fail the test. I just don't know where I would categorize it. So we're going to keep it moving. We're going to go with the only non-Hennessy one that I'm testing today. And this is the Martel Cornon Blue. Now, as you can see, I've had some already, and it's good. But what I hadn't done before was do a no fool in comparison with some other Hennessy brands. Uh, when I had this before, actually, I just put it on the rocks like I normally do. Had it with a stogie, and it was, it was very good. Today, I'm going to sample it neat and then put it on the rocks for later and see how it does against the Hennessy lineup. So we've got a new glass, Martel Cordon Bleu. We'll come back and give it the, uh, the neat test and the evaluation. Be right back. Okay, this Martel Cordon Bleu has been sitting nicely. And as you can see, it's just got a really nice full body. And this could be something that I'm just used to or something that I expect, but I think that a cognac should have this hue. Part of the challenge I had with the white was the color. Mmm, smells stronger. That is really smooth. This is going to be our cognac of the night on the rocks. And because tonight's movie is uh, Transformers Part 2, a little bit longer than the first one, two and a half hours. I may have to do a couple of these Martells. 
cork. Just saying. Lovely that. Yeah, I can see us doing a couple of these tonight. And um, because of the length of the movie, we are going to pair it. Just got a new box of these guys in. The Oliva Serie V Double Toro. Uh, now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see. This wrapping is just exquisite with the ribbon. Uh, box of 24, 6 by 60 ring gauge. But this is not a review of cigars, which I probably should do at some point. This first one, this first one is ready to go. Um, one thing I would ask that you guys do for me, right? Uh, I watched the movie last night, the very first Transformers. And who can't be a fan of Sam Woodwicky? Young high schooler trying to get his act together, trying to get the girl, and trying to, trying to do what he's got to do to help the Transformers, uh, you know, uh, save the world. And uh, there's a scene in, in the first one, and I've got a link to it in the description. It's not very long. Do me a favor. Please go watch it. It's about two minutes or so. It's the scene where um, Anthony Anderson plays some type of super hacker, and a friend of his shows up with, with the disc because she's got some super sensitive stuff on it. She wants him to look at it. And at the time, Anthony and his cousin, I forget the big guy's name, uh, but he was in um, several TV series. Uh, CSI Miami was one. He was also in, in a Spike Lee movie. I forget the name of it, but it was the one say World War I or World War II where they were in Italy. Um, big guy, really nice actor. But so they're doing some type of whatever was going on back in 2007, some type of video game dancing, and then the FBI shows up. I want you to watch this clip and watch how he just hauls ass when they start breaking to get out. And he's yelling, I'm just a cousin, I'm just a cousin. That whole scene was hilarious. I got a clip in here in the, uh, in the description, and there was a famous line in there from Anthony Anderson that was basically like, shut up, Grandma. Just a, just a classic scene. So before I come back to night three, and the next one is going to be the, the James, please take a moment and watch that clip. It was hilarious. Uh, now we're going to go out, and our movie on the deck tonight is Transformers Part 2. I think this one's going to be pretty good because this is the one where uh, I think they bring Tuturo out of mothballs. He's been kind of embarrassed based on what happened in Sector 7 in the first movie. And now Sam Woodwicky needs his help, so they go get him from a deli or something. And they got to go back and do some fighting with some Decepticons. You can't ask for more than that on a summer night where it's uh, 90 degrees outside at uh, 1.15 in the morning. That's about when I'm filming this. So I'm going to go out. We're going to film that. We'll see you guys tomorrow with the next one. Cheers. All right, welcome back to night three of Cognac with the Coach, where tonight is probably the most anticipated night because this is the James Hennessy that I've heard so much about was so difficult to get, and I've never had it. So looking forward to this one. Oh, the cork. We talked about that. Put it on the clock, 15 minutes. We'll be right back. All right, we are back, ready to sample the James. Again, very even color and body. Good, deep, dark brown. Smells wonderful. Here we go. Oh boy, mm. that is very good. Once again, if you please. Mm. Just smooth and even bodied and uh, very good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we will definitely be having that for tonight's movie, which is the third installation of Transformers. I don't know what the sub name is. doesn't really matter. Again, I don't know how much this is. Between you and me, we're just going to call it the double, all right? I really don't know. Outside we go with this, James Hennessy. See you guys tomorrow. Okay, here we go. Our last test is going to be 
the extra old Hennessy XO. Let's open it up. Really good looking bottle. I like to unwrap all of the neck dressing on all of the Hennessy bottles because it's metal and it's sharp and if you catch a piece at some point you're going to cut yourself so I always don't just take it off the cap, I take it off the neck as well. Lovely that. Very heavy top, love that. So let's move the white out of the way for now. Get this uh, XO in there. All right, you know the drill. Put on the clock for 15 minutes. We'll be back. All right, time's up. Let's check out the Hennessy XO. Very pleasant aroma, as is the case with, with the other Hennessy's, specifically the VSOP and the James. Really nice color balance when held up to the light. Just looks amazing. Dark. Oh, that is very good. smooth, but you would expect that from an XO. Tonight we will be pairing the Hennessy XO with another Oliva Series V Double Toro. That's been the only cigar I've been using all week for all of these, so that's, that at least keeps one thing consistent. And by now we all know what this is, right? Just a double. Uh, the movie tonight, since this is the fourth Actual night of testing, I'm going to watch the fourth iteration of the Transformers. This one is called Age of Extinction. It's the first one with Mark Wahlberg, the first one without Shia LeBeau. Um, should be interesting. So what I'm going to do is, um, we're going to take this out. We're going to have a uh, cigar and cognac and movie on the deck. So what I'm going to do tomorrow, basically, is I'm going to come back. I'm going to give you my final results, my thoughts on each one of these lovely cognacs. And then uh, I will pick whatever that, whatever the quote-unquote winner is. I'll have one more of those tomorrow with the fifth installation, uh, which was the last installation of the Transformers movies. I want to say the first one that we watched was 2007, then the second was 2009. Uh, the one I watched last night was 2012. Today's Age of Extinction, um, 2014. I think the last one was 2017. So hang in there for one more day. You'll see my final choice is for the winner, best cognac here at Coach B's. All right, see you tomorrow. All right, everybody, welcome back to the final night, night five of the cognac testing or cognac with the coach. Tonight I'm going to tell you which one is the winner. As you can see, I've already poured right there. I've made that pour about 20 minutes ago. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit this in front of our overall winner. I do have basically two winners, but all in all, I want to put this in front of the one winner. Can you guess which one it is? If you've been watching, you may have noticed already that the order of the bottles is different than it's been the last four nights. But if you have it, I will show you that the winner goes here to the James Hennessy. Um, by, by far, it was the smoothest, although strong, very smooth, and it just went down different, uh, both neat and, uh, and on the rocks. I really, really uh, do enjoy the James Hennessy. It's my first time with it. I can tell you that it will become a regular here um, in our household, um, not necessarily for Gen Pop. There's only a few people that I consider uh, cognac connoisseurs. And when they're over, by all means, we, we, can, we can share some of that. But that will stay in the rotation. What I talked about before was, you know, different categories or maybe two types of winners. So let me give you the overall scores. The order that I have them in. I have the Martell at an 8. I have the Hennessy VSOP Privilege at an 8.5 overall. Yep. I have the Hennessy XO, which is very good, uh, at a 9. And I've got the James at a 9.5. 
Now, again, this is my score, right? I've never had Louis XIII or some of those really, really, really expensive cognacs. And I'm sure if I were ever fortunate enough to do that, I could, you know, redo my scores. But based on what I've had, based on my consumption, um, 885995. Nine, now, let me tell you why a little bit. This, this Martell, although good, uh, the price throws it off. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about overall bargain. So let's move this cigar out the way for now. This Martell is not a VSOP. Uh, it's not an XO. It's, it's very good uh, at an 8, but it's not $225 a bottle good. It really just isn't. That's why my, my overall second winner is my daily go-to, the Hennessy VSOP Privilege. You know, $53 a bottle, you know, compared to everything else on the bar is, is just dramatic. And it is good. It's always been good. I've always liked it. I just wanted to see what the rest of these cognacs would uh, taste like and whether or not I could discern the difference. And, and I can. So, again, if, if I'm going to spend this kind of money, it won't be on just a regular. Although this is good, I probably won't be buying that again. The XO was $199. And the James was $250. Cost me a little bit more than $250 because uh, they don't sell it, you know, in the stores here. You, can, you have to get it at a duty-free when you're traveling. And I wasn't traveling, so I actually had to write to France, which I did, and had this bad boy shipped all the way from France. So that was an extra $40. Bucks. By the time I finished paying, it was $290. But you can get it at a duty-free uh, for probably just a little bit more than an XO. Um, and I, I think it's well worth it. So the next time D and I are going out of the country, I'll put that on the list and stop bringing back the Hennessy White. I, I have too many bottles of that, don't need it, and it doesn't, it doesn't rank up here with this type of cognac, right? So roughly 250, 200, 53, 225, that, that's why you have to kind of balance it out. If, if you're on a budget, you can still have a really, really good cognac. Uh, and if you're not on a budget and you want to splurge, which, uh, which I've done throughout this entire, this entire process, the James Hennessy is well worth you know, that splurge, even if you only do it once. Let me, let me read you real quickly what, what, what Hennessy says. Okay, granted, it's kind of like they're drinking their own Kool-Aid or drinking their own Hennessy, you see, you see what it is. Anyway, um, one of the things that I agree with here is it, it basically says, this cognac is beautiful and it has shades of amber with highlights of bronze and offers up layers of smooth, toasty aromas, silky yet well-structured. And that's a good way to put it, silky yet well-structured. And then it says, to be enjoyed neat or over ice. And during this particular evaluation, I've been doing them both ways, uh, neat, and then over ice for my, for my movie of the night. Oh, that is good. Speaking of the movie of the night, I've been pairing up each of these cognacs each night with a cigar and a movie, and the movies have all been part of the Transformer series. Um, tonight is the fifth movie in that series, which was the second one that Mark Wahlberg was in, and I just found this out straight up that the subtitle of tonight's Transformers movie is called The Last Night. Seriously, like this is the last night of the tasting. The movie is also called The Last Night. Who knew? Look, I'll show you. Seriously. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but bang. The Transformers, The Last Night. Now, it's spelt K-N-I-G-H-T, but how cool is that that the last night of my tasting is also the movie called The Last Night. You can't make this shit up. This is legitimate. It just worked out. Five movies, five nights of taste testing, and one big winner, The James. So, like we've done every night, we're going to put a little on ice. You know the drill. This is called the double. Oh, yes. So, I really would like to know what guys like Big Gist have to say. He may have the James already. I'm going to find out because he's, you know, he's just been in France recently because Jay plays over there uh, professional basketball. And I wonder if Big Gist has been bringing back this James Hennessy and not telling me about it. I will find out and let you know. 
Uh, Freddie, let me know what you think. You got to go out and get these and do your own tests. Lou has already done some kind of test. I'll find out what, but I know he recommended the James Holly. I think his words were, that's the best cognac I've ever had as well. So for me, I'm glad you guys were able to hang with the coach, do some cognac with the coach this week. It's been a fantastic experience. I learned a lot. They are all really, very good. If you love cognac, you can't go wrong with any of these four. But if you really want to go next level, you want to go with these two, you cannot go wrong with an XO. and You want to take it a step further than XO, the James Hennessy is the way to go. That's it. That's all we got tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We will talk to you next time. Bye now.